three ways that we can get the tape stop effect in Logic. And we can apply it to either audio, our instruments, or the entire track. Let's go. Okay, so the first method that we're gonna look at is applying it to a piece of audio. And what we've done here is do a little tape stop to a change effect in this track here. So let's have a look at how we could apply that to this vinyl pad just here. If we take this, let's have it so that slows down as well. We can press I to bring up the inspector. It's already on the left hand side here for me. And when we've got this region selected, we can change our fade in and fade out options, which is you know, it comes up here and I can bring a fade in. We can switch that fade out to a slowdown. And then the further we bring the slowdown, the longer it fades out and slows down for us. Or we can just have a really quick tape stop right at the end. And it can be a really nice, useful transition trick, and that's how I've used it on the piano in this track here. What about if we want to do that to a VST instrument? We can't just, unfortunately, pop the fade on there and have that work. We have to use a plugin and another trick. Check this. So in here, I've got this little vocal pad. This is how we do it. Before that, this video is sponsored by DistroKid and they are my music distributor, meaning they get all of my music out to all of the major streaming platforms. And they do that at a price an independent artist can easily afford. Nevertheless, in the description below, there is a discount off of your first year of unlimited distribution. Check out the link to find out more about getting your music out to all the major streaming platforms. So what we do here, we need to use a separate plugin that's gonna allow us to do that pitch shift down, which is effectively what the slowdown is. So inside Logic, we can pick inside pitch and then the pitch shifter. And we're gonna select stereo, it's a stereo file. Now for some reason, it loads up and does this by default. I don't know why. We are gonna want the mix to go to 100 and we were gonna reset the semitones to be at zero here. Now the timing for vocals could be absolutely fine, but we do have other options if needed. Pitch tracking can be particularly useful for this type of thing. So what we're gonna do here is now we're gonna control the semitone pull down of one octave. And the way that we'll do that is really simple. If we press A, that brings up the automation lane for Logic's instruments. And over here on the bit that says Vox Pad, where it says volume, we're gonna take that to pitch shift and we're going to pick the one that says semitones. Now making sure we have the pencil tool up here as our second tool. When we press command, it will switch to that pencil tool. And we are gonna draw this dip just here. and it dips dropping a semitone at a time. Here we can make use of the sense control at the same time to help smooth that out a little bit. And then we're gonna to wanna to have a play around with some of the timings, some of the delay, and potentially the crossfade. In this case, I found manual, and these settings are working relatively well. Now there is another way we can do that and we go back to that audio method we had before. If we right click on this region, we can really simply bounce in place. Now it has its own region. Bring it back something like here and we could do the same method and just slow it down that way. whichever works best for you. Now, what about if we wanna put a tape stop inside the entire track and slow everything down at a moment? We would have to bounce everything to audio and put all these fades in. There is a way that we can do it with the entire track, and I'm gonna show you that now. If you like this style of production, by the way, I've got an entire course on producing a liquid DMB track from scratch that includes vocals and everything. But if you can't pick that up, maybe just throw a subscribe on the channel instead. So this involves using some of the global options, okay? 
If we press G, we get our global automation options. And let's zoom in on the little bit we wanna make it dip, and we'll just have it so it's over this one bar. Remember we had our pencil control in before? We're gonna put two points in, and we want the first one to be at the BPM that we're currently on, and we want the other one just to be at the end here. And we're gonna just lift that up so it's out of the way for the minute, and we want, there we go. And we wanna use this handle to give ourselves a nice curve. And now we're gonna, now we're gonna use this to dip this down good chunk of BPM. Now this can be finicky. You can do the tiniest adjustment and it can do things like select the whole uh, whole amount, which is really annoying. So just watch out when you're doing that. Like we've done that here. If I was to make an adjustment now, it'll adjust everything. And if I click away, it does this. So just control Z. So now we're gonna have something like this. Right, so we're gonna have it so it almost holds here and we want it to come back up to the original tempo. And to do that, we're gonna put a point here and we're gonna use that curve just to ramp it back up to the original 174 that we were at. And that gives us something super fun like this. So that's three ways that you can do tape stops and slowdowns in Logic Pro. If the video was helpful for you, I do many more Logic Pro tutorials. If you wanna learn something new, check out the video that is on screen next. I do look forward to seeing you in that one.